The final editing feature we're going to cover is a somewhat unintended use of Ableton's warp markers. I always like to take a look at functions that are available in programs and see how I can abuse them in ways that weren't originally anticipated by the designer. And let's test this out. So we're going to take a, a hit here on the piano and we're going to use the split clip function and we're going to split that and make it its own clip. And you can see down here it's uh, split the clip, but it's and it has this selected, but it still carries all this other crap along with it. So we're going to right click on this and we're going to use the crop clip function. And what that'll do is that'll make this into its own individual clip so you don't have all the other garbage in there. Now, as you can see, it's added a warp marker here at the beginning. And what we're going to do is we are going to add in some extra warp markers. So we're going to add in a warp marker by double clicking and we're going to stretch this way out. As you can see, it kicks the audio waveform out here. So we're going to see how that sounds. We're going to start adding in more warp markers and just moving them around, stretching the hell out of this clip and seeing what it sounds like. That's a little closer to what we want. It's giving it that really granular, time-stretched, glitchy effect. Again, uh, really not what Ableton intended with it, I'm sure, but uh, gives us an interesting sounding edit. Now we're going to start to get into some more interesting sound design stuff. So I'm going to take this clip and I'm going to duplicate it. And now I'm going to use Ableton's envelopes feature. So first thing you have to do is you have to make sure this little E down here for the envelopes is lit up and that gives you the envelope section here and it gives us the ability to draw in automated changes to various things like transpose, volume pan, any type of MIDI CC, um, whole range of sound design options here and a couple things first of all we're gonna take this right here and we're gonna change it to texture that gives us a couple of different options and in general I like the sound of this on this style effect a little bit better now we're going to click on transpose. We're going to make sure that our transpose envelope is selected and we are going to double click to add automated points. And what I want is for this to wildly transpose up while the sample is playing. So I'm going to pitch this up by 19 semitones here and let's listen to both of the clips we have. sounds pretty extreme which is exactly what we're looking for. Now I'm going to go back to our previous clip and activate the envelopes and I'm going to use a volume envelope to get a gated effect on this clip. So I'm going to add in some automation points here. And I'm just going to draw in some manual automation. So I've created a nice manual gating effect using volume automation on this first clip. We're going to do one extra step though, is we're going to switch to the panning envelopes and we're going to pan each volume increase to a different side of the stereo spectrum to see how that sounds. Alright, so now I've got my panning envelopes in there. Let's check it out. We're going to switch back to our transposed clip here and we're going to use one additional feature. So I've switched things to texture mode here, which gives us grain size and flux. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the grain size. Gives us a little bit of a different sound. And now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select grain size and I'm going to automate that.
there's the effect I want. Perfect. So I've done a couple of final touch-up edits using the same techniques we just went over, and we've finished the completed version. So let's have a listen to what we've just worked on. <laughs> 